A new internal poll has been circulating and it's really bad news for Democrats. The poll looks at swing voters and how they view the Democratic Party. According to the poll, it would seem Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is one of the most visible individuals in the Democratic Party. And this group of, indiv- this group of individuals really, really doesn't like socialism, which is one thing I've been saying for a long time. So of course, it's evidence towards my own bias, confirmation bias, but we'll read it anyway. Listen, I am a moderate leftist, right? To them, to the ocasio Cortezes and others, I don't exist. I must be a right winger because there's no center. It's really, it's, it's really funny, isn't it? Like we know centrists exist, right? So why is it that I can't be one? I don't know. I've praised left-wing policy while criticizing the left. That's typically what I do. And because of that, they say it must be right-wing. It makes literally no sense. I am the voter they need to get if they want to win in 2020, and they have done nothing. Now, Tulsi Gabbard has done a lot. I really like Tulsi, but they're not going to give her the nomination, and we all know it. The same is true for Andrew Yang. I wouldn't vote for Gravel because I think he's kind of being silly, and I don't agree with him for the most part. And I wouldn't vote for Marianne Williamson just because while I think she's hokey and wholesome, I I wouldn't vote for her. So what's going to end up happening? Me? I'm probably going to vote independent or not vote at all. I actually think I'll probably vote like independent or something. I might just, you know, write in Tulsi if if, uh, uh, she doesn't get the nomination. Um, Maybe, I don't know, vote for myself because it's better than not voting. And at least I know what I believe in, right? Here's the point I always make with my videos. If they weren't so busy trying to excise people like me, they might realize what they need to win. But I will say this before we read through the poll. One of the big bets the Democrats are making is that by getting, by waking up progressive voters, they will, re- they will, they will solve the problem of losing moderates. But let me just stress, as I have many times, when you lose a moderate, the Republicans probably will pick them up. What, so if you gain one on the left and lose one on the right and the right gains one on the left, Congratulations. The Republicans are up one and you're at zero. But let's read this. Before we get started, head over to timcast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are multiple ways to donate, PayPal, crypto, and a physical address. But of course, share this video because YouTube doesn't suggest my content the same way they used to. They've deranked everybody. So if you think this video is important, I rely on you to get the word out. From Axios, exclusive poll, AOC defining Dem in swing states. They write, Top Democrats are circulating a poll showing that one of the House's most progressive members, Ocasio-Cortez, has become a definitional face for the party with a crucial group of swing voters. Horrible, horrible bad news, I might add. Horrible. Why it matters. These Democrats are sounding the alarm that swing voters know and dislike socialism, warning it could cost them the House and the presidency. The poll is making the rounds of some of the most influential Democrats in America. Quote, if all voters hear about it's AOC, it could put the House majority at risk, said a top Democrat who was involved in 2020 congressional races. She is getting all the news and defining everyone's, everyone else's races. Think about what just happened. Let me, let me say this. Ocasio-Cortez starts mouthing off about concentration camps. She refuses to back down. She calls CBP a rogue agency, and then a dude literally shows up at a nice facility with weapons, and you know how that went. I, I certainly hope you do. Ocasio-Cortez is a bloviating blowhard, loudmouth narcissist who has no idea what she's talking about. And this is coming from someone who praised her when she first won the primary. And that's not an exaggeration. You can look on this channel and go back and see my half an hour video where I'm like, woo, she did it. She won. Yes, I praised her. And now we get to see her character as time goes on. She is a bad person. She refuses to accept when she's wrong. She pushes nonsense. She accuses Pelosi of, uh, of singling a woman of color, which we know what that means, and then denies it. No, it's not about racism. Oh, please, dude. You're a card-carrying member of the Democratic Socialists of America who have protested four open borders, holding signs saying no borders and abolish profits. What do you think that means to middle America? It means the Democrats have lost it. Let's read on. The poll taken in May before Speaker Pelosi's latest run-in with AOC and the three other liberal House freshmen known as the Squad included 1,003 likely general election voters who are white and have two years or less of college education. Hey, that includes me. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm not white. Yes. And and I mean this seriously. It's, I I, I don't know like actually how it works, but I know that because 
according to like the census, because I'm part Korean, I'm literally just Korean. Like they don't count white in that regard. So I'm just Korean. But let's read on. Uh, They say, these are white non-college voters who embraced Donald Trump in 2016, but are needed by Democrats in swing house districts. The group that took the poll shared the results with Axios on the condition that it not be named because the group has to work with all members of the party, with all parts of the party. The findings. Ocasio-Cortez was recognized by 74% of voters in the poll. 22% had a favorable view. Oh my God. (laughs) Swing voters do not like her. Rep. Ilan Omar uh, of Minnesota. Another member of the squad was recognized by 53% of voters, 9%, not a typo, they write, had a favorable view. Oh, Lord, help us. The Democrats have lit themselves on fire. And I'll tell you, you know, the easiest example, the easiest bit of proof is how they throw me under the bus. I am by no means a far left progressive. I am just your run of the mill social liberal, the typical moderate working class, uneducated folk from the south side of Chicago who is looking for a real solution and doesn't quite know what these great ivory tower elites have in store. But I would I would like to find something that makes sense. So I don't like the wealthy privileged elites. I want something for the working class. And what do we get? We get wacky nonsense, identitarianism and socialism. Sorry, that's not what me and my friends and family want. So you've lost us. This poll is really funny. Because it's like a reflection of who I am and where I come from. Although I'll say this, my friends and family are in Chicago, not a swing uh, district. Now here's the crazy part. Socialism was viewed favorably by 18% of the voters and unfavorably by 69%. Capitalism was 56% favorable, 32% unfavorable. I think that kind of describes where I'm I'm like a mixed economy person, but I kind of lean a little bit more towards the, the, the cooperative side. I don't like saying socialist because socialist is a, is a legit, like a hard form of economy. I say cooperative versus competitive because it's like, it's, it's nuanced, right? But cooperative means you lean a little bit more towards socialism and away from free market capitalism. But I'm like a centrist, you know, so I'm not, I think you got to have a right balance right in the middle because free markets run amok, cause damage. You get massive, uh, you know, tech oligopolies like Google, Facebook, Twitter, etc. But without uh, a free market, you get <laughs> no food and no phones and stagnation and death. So there's got to be a good balance where we have government regulation that can restrict the worst impulses of the free market while making sure we can still maintain healthy competition and that bad industries die. Because that's what you need. You need an evolution in the marketplace. But let's read on. Socialism is toxic to these voters at the top Democrat. Between the lines, Democrats are performing better with these voters than in 2016 although still not as well in 2018. So party leaders will continue to try to define themselves around more mainstream members. Sorry, (laughs) AOC takes the cake. To the other side, three members of the squad, uh, they say Omar, Rashida Tlaib, and Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts defended their approach while appearing in Philadelphia yesterday on a panel at the annual Netroots Nation conference. I was once invited to that. I think I was a speaker. I never, I didn't go though. AP's Juana Summers reports. We never need to ask for permission or wait for an invitation to lead, Omar said. Adding later that there's a constant struggle oftentimes with people who have power, who have power about sharing that power. Listen, there's this weird mentality these people have. It's really annoying. They don't care for facts. They don't care about what, what actually works. They don't care about what's, what will solve problems. They're just overly emotional. And I'm not talking, no, I, I, and here, they, here it comes. Oh, I said it. Now they're going to go, oh, Tim's a bigot. He's blaming them for being women. That's what they do. When Nancy Pelosi singles them out, they say it's because we're women of color because that's their attack factor. Nancy Pelosi is white. When I say they're acting on emotion, they're going to say he just he that's that's a dog whistle to uh, being to, you know, to being a misogynist. No, seriously, when you refuse to fund the border wall and then uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not the wall, the border crisis, like the humanitarian aid and then complain there's a crisis. It's like, dude, listen, check this out. From Real Clear Politics a couple days ago, Ocasio Cortez says, This is a manufactured crisis because the cruelty is manufactured. Oh dear Lord, help me. Ocasio Cortez is despicable, completely despicable. The Democrats were mocking the idea of a crisis at the border, mocking it, laughing, refusing to fund it. And now here we are, and they're going to be, listen, I'm going to tell you something from a policy perspective. When I say I would like money in humanitarian aid, 
from the government. That is a social program where I want the government to fund humanitarian aid. A, I swear to God, it's a left wing position, you silly Democrats. Oh my God. Ask, like, listen, I, I am opposed to private detention centers and I speak out against them. And I would like the government to fund aid to help this sol- solve this problem. Is that, is, what, what, what universe are we in? These people have lost it. And that's why, look, man, they can mock me all day and night. They can ridicule me. They can push me aside, marginalize me, my friends, and the, and, the, and the space in politics that I am in. But I tell you this, my friends and family who grew up in support of the LGBT community, who defended progressive rights, who are now shrugging, saying, what is going on? We are the people you need to vote for you, and you are losing us, and you don't care. You mock, you belittle, you smear, and I'll tell you what happens. Brandon Straka, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, walk away happens. People just say enough and they walk away. I, 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 look, I've, I, am, I am not on board with the Democrats at this point. And I flat out said I'll probably be voting independent. Well, well, I might just vote for Tulsi no matter what. So I don't want to say necessarily that I'm leaving, right? But the Democrats have gone nuts, plain and simple. Look at the tweets they put out. It is a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. And here's what's going to happen. I got another segment coming up for you. Donald Trump tweeted some, some stupid nonsense. Ugh. And, and you know, and people on Twitter are mad at me. It's like, I don't, I don't care, man. You know, they're like, they, they expect me to like, you guys know I don't like Trump. <laughs> so I ragged on his tweet and a bunch, I got ratioed hard and I don't care. And some people are like, why are you posting all this left? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this for the next segment. But, but the next segment isn't necessarily about um, Trump tweeting stupid things. And the thing is, look, Trump, I think Trump tweets a lot of stupid things. It's how he's goaded the left into blaming the Democrats for Trump's tweets. What is going on? <sighs> I will see you in a few moments in the next segment.